Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Blue Golfball here today with another Pokemon TCG video and uh, today I'm going to be doing the set review for the Breakpoint set which is set to release on February 3rd, 2016 and um, so this is pretty early. Uh, this was released already in Japan but um, you know it was released about a week ago in December 11th, 2015 but this is kind of early because um, you can see right here the English set will have over 120 cards, whereas the Japanese set only had about over 80 cards. So we're still missing 40 cards, and uh, that's a lot of cards. But And you can see right here, this is the Breakpoint set list, and um, not all the cards are here yet. But we're going to look at the ones that are here from Rage of the Broken Heavens. And there's a number of cards I want to highlight, even though, yes, I want to. I do acknowledge we are missing 40 cards, but I thought... You know, too excited for this set, and I'm looking forward to it, so let's just jump right into it, right? And yeah, let's do it. So let's go ahead, we're going to take a look at this first um, card right here, is the uh, Mag uh, Magnium here. Uh, it's got the, this artwork looks pretty darn cool, I mean, it looks like it's right in the the midst of, uh, you know, uh, the action right here. Uh, we have right is the, um, this guy is a stage 2 of course, 150 HP grass type Pokemon. It's got the ability Overgrow. As long as this Pokemon, uh, this, uh, remaining HP is 50 or less, each of this Pokemon's attack does 70 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. And uh, that's before applying weakness and resistance. Now, uh, does 70 more, uh, that's only if you are 50 or less. And, um, yeah, you can see right here, it does cost um, 3 energy, 2 grass, and 1 colorless, 450 damage. Heal from this Pokemon the same amount of damage done to your opponent's active Pokemon. Yes, that means if you're at 50 HP, so let's say your opponent hits you for 100, you're at 50 with your overgrow ability, you can hit 450 uh, plus 70, which is uh, 120, and basically heal everything off. Um, yeah, but the thing is, a lot of Pokemon these days, they, they, they'll they definitely hit for more than 150. Um, and even with, let's say, Training Stadium, um, or, yeah, train, Training Center, you, you can have 180 HP, but there's so many Pokemon out there that hits for 180 HP knockouts. And, um, but there's a card in this set that can help you out, uh, which we'll get to in a little bit. And uh, the nice thing about this is the Overgrow here is actually kind of cool. If you can combine it with... Um, Let's say other uh, your previous evolutions, and if you're playing in expanded, you can use Celebi EX, but um, you can use uh, Shrine of Memories if you're playing standard. And so you can do Body Slam for one energy for 20, and then heal that amount of uh, um, not heal, but um, <clears throat> hit for 20, and then if you're at 50 HP, uh, you, you hit for 70 more, which you go hit for 90. And um, you know that that actually works pretty well um, if you can use Shrine of Memories that way. You never know, that could come in handy, and then you flip heads, and then you do paralyze them. And so that'll be a two-hit knockout, you know, hitting for hit for 90 damage two times. That'll be a two-hit knockout, most EXs. So there's things like that, nifty tricks you can do with that. Um, so I'm going to skip over the C dot. Let's look at this uh, cricket, turn, cricket turn here. And um, so this guy, uh, the artwork, it's all right. <laughs> I mean, I don't have much to say, but, oh, man, he's three foot three, 56 pounds. Oh, man. Alright, so during your next turn, if this attack does damage to the defending Pokemon, if they're applying weakness and resistance, this, that attack does 60 more damage to that Pokemon. Now, it doesn't mean that this Pokemon has to attack, right? So during your next turn, if an attack does damage to the defending Pokemon, assuming that defending Pokemon doesn't hit the bench, um, if an attack, so any attack, so this Screech right here can basically boost up any attack, which you have to attack with it, but then coming into your next turn, you can hit with anything and it would do 60 more. What does that mean? Well, that means, for example, if you bring out Cricket Tune here, if I can pronounce this guy's name correctly, but you can do Screech and then uh, let this guy sit out in the active spot and take a hit for you. Maybe even get knocked out, I don't know. But let's say you bring in Seismitoad next. Your Seismitoad with the DCE will hit for the uh, for 30, with the Muscle Bait it hits for 50, but because you did Screech in the previous turn, you hit it for 110 because of that 60 additional damage. I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's something to that. Um, maybe if you're playing Expanded, you can use things like... Um, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Uh, life Do? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. 
And then you just let uh, Critic 2 not sit out there, do Screech, boost up your attacks, and then your next turn you hit 60 more attacks yeah, for more damage for you know your next attack. So um, yeah, you can combine it with Slash too. Certainly can do that. Hit for 100 for one energy. Um, but like, why not? You know, take advantage of this. Maybe maybe use um, Stand In and Retreat with Zoroark. So there's always those things too. All right, so let's take a look at uh, Lulagant here. Um, Let's see, there's nothing too much to, uh, too interesting about this. If your opponent attaches an energy card uh, to the defending Pokemon, um, during his or her next turn, the defending Pokemon comes asleep. So basically all you're doing is you're saying, all right, I'm going to hit you with Teary-Eyed, and your next turn, if you try to attach an energy on your Pokemon, your Pokemon goes asleep. Ha, take that. And, um, I mean, yeah, I can see how that could work. Um, but otherwise, I, I don't think this would be very effective. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Because um, you, you have to use your this this attack for the turn just to do that. And um, there's too many things that could probably negate it. I don't know. So, interesting. Very interesting. All right, let's take a look at Durant here. Uh, Kevin Durant. I'm just kidding. Uh, Durant's guy actually pretty cool. Uh, it is a grass type instead of its usual steel type. Uh, discard the top of your opponent's uh, top card of your opponent's deck. Yeah, you know, Mountain Munch. You know, hits for ten. You discard a card, sure. Uh, but if this Pokemon has any damage counters on it, discard the top four cards of your opponent's deck. Oh my goodness. Um, this means that you can play a Rainbow Energy. And then... I don't know, another Energy. But you, you have just ten damage counters on it, right? It has any damage counters on it. From a Rainbow Energy, you play it on there, you can already discard four cards. And if you... You know, if you play, if you combine, there's a, there's a supporter that you can combine uh, this with later on um, <clears throat> that we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit. But man, th this could be really good for milling your opponent. I don't know. I'm just thinking like, wow, four cards for a grind down. And this is better than the Durant, um, the, the one from, I don't know what set that was, the, the metal one. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, this is pretty good. I like grind down. That's actually kind of, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Uh, what's gonna, it sounds painful though. Uh, I don't think there's much to say about Heat more. As the page loads here, you can see, um, if it ever loads. I don't know what's going on with my internet here. Um, but yeah. Uh, so there's Heat more, which will load in a couple years. Uh, there's Slowbro I'm interested in, and, uh, Slow, so is, um, so apparently Heat more never loaded. But here's Heat more. Um, yeah, it looks kind of cool, I suppose. Um, if this Pokemon has a, po a, a tool card attached to it, it's 20 more damage. I suppose that's alright. Um, I mean, it's really only one energy. Heat Blast is terrible. Three energies for 70. I mean, I guess it's not terrible, but you can put it on a muscle band and hit for 90. You know, fire weak Pokemon, but still, three energies is very costly. Um, yeah, you can hit, you can slap on a muscle band, and then you do 20 more plus the, the, the muscle band, so you hit for 60 for one energy, which isn't terrible. And if you're up against uh, Fire Weak Pokemon, double that, it'd be 120 for one energy. And I, I guess I, I, I'm not liking it too much, but um, so here, here's Slow King. Let's take a look at Slow Bro first. So Slow Bro evolved from Slow Poke. Um, <laughs> Slow as usual. Uh, flip a coin if heads. This attack does 50 more damage. So careless headbutt. Yeah, you can hit for 64 energy. So that seems kind of like the heat more we just looked at. But um, miracle home run. Uh, it's kind of costly. Three energies. If you have one prize card remaining when you use this attack, you win the game. Now, a couple things I'm thinking here. In expanded, we could use Mu EX. With Dimension Valley and a DCE, you can use Miracle Home Run and just uh, wrap up the game that way, right? I mean, you're down to one prize. Uh, I don't know where this can come in con uh, for any convenience, but yeah, it beats me. Okay. Um, okay, so Slow King here, uh, the King's Inspiration, the 100 HP Water Type Pokemon. It's got the ability King's Inspiration here. Once during your turn, before your attack, you may flip a coin. If heads, move an energy card attached to your opponent's active Pokemon to one of his or her bench Pokemon. Now, why is this going to be a really powerful ability? It is a coin flip, but this is the same thing as Sylveon's um, attack, Curly Ribbon, that moves an energy. This is pretty significant because if you're playing against fighting decks, for example, 
and you're playing, you're up against a Lucario EX with a strong energy. You can flip heads for King's Inspiration and say, for example, every deck runs Shaman EX. Let's say, for example, there's a Shaman EX on your opponent's bench. You can easily flip a coin, well, not easily, you gotta flip a coin 50 50. If it's heads, you move that strong energy to that Shaman, and that energy is discarded because it needs to be played on only fighting Pokemon. So. There's things like that, right? There's so many special energies that are type specific and so many people playing Shaman EX. Can you imagine running into like, I don't know, Mega Manectric EX with the um, that Flash energy or Camera Up EX with Burning energy? I don't know. There's plenty of things you can try to mess around with. King's Inspiration here. Psych Up, of course, during your next turn, uh, stack this 40 more damage. For 2 energy, hitting for 40 and then hitting for 80. Pretty whole hum for me pretty whole hum but uh, King's Inspiration could there could be something to it here could be something to it here I uh, maybe you can combine it with uh, <laughs> Sylveon or something <coughs> excuse me still still recovering from a cold but <clears throat> alright anyways so on to the next uh, we do have uh, Cloyster here I'm not particularly interested in Cloyster too much but um, could it have an in infinite loop? Uh, I do like the artwork here. It does give a really nice. Um, it, it almost feels like a color pencil uh, artwork here. But uh, the 100 HP Water type Pokemon for only one Water Energy Sudden Clamp. If this Pokemon evolved from Shelter during this turn, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed, and you can hit Surf pretty whole hum. You see this around uh, quite a bit, but um, Shelter doing this uh, effect, right? Um, so, for example, if you uh, if you have Shelter right now and you evolve into Cloyster, um, you know, evolving from Shelter doing this effect, um, yeah, your active Pokemon's paralyzed, and then you, you hit for 10. I mean, with the Muscle Band, you can hit for 30, and then they're paralyzed. Now, uh, we have things like, uh, super, not Super Scoop Up, oh yeah, yeah, Super Scoop Up, and then in Expanded, you have Scoop Up Cyclone, uh, there's AZ, things like that. For only one energy, AZ is pretty cost-efficient. Because um, um, you're losing one energy, but you can always get an energy pretty easily. And this could be an infinite vicious cycle. All right, think about that. Every time um, you hit them for for ten, sudden clamp, they're paralyzed. They're stuck there. Right, we're hitting for thirty, really, if you can get a muscle band. So maybe you don't want to use AZ for that because you're gonna discard your muscle band every time. Uh, so super scoop ups are really nice. But then you know, yeah, and coming into your next turn, since um, your opponent. Um, wasn't able to do anything. You can basically just flip for heads, or if you can, if you can flip for heads. Um, and yeah, you flip for heads, pick up your cloister, and then uh, uh, wash, friends, repeat. <laughs> right. Uh, so we're gonna skip over these Gyarados for now. We'll take a look at them at the end. Uh, let's take a look at Suicune here. Of course, we all remember Suicune uh, from uh, the what is it called again? Um, uh, what was that set? Oh my gosh, I can't remember that set. Plasma Blast, that's right, where it had a uh, safeguard. But this is protection from the of the wind. Um, so this is, it's also got a uh, HP increase. It's now at 120 HP versus the one with the um, um, safeguard is only at 100 HP. So Suicune here, as long as you have this Pokemon as your active Pokemon, prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks except damage done to each of your Pokemon. This ability does not remove existing effects kind of interesting um, so for this I think this is definitely key meaning that um, for example if you're playing against a Pokemon that does poison sting and it hits for 10 and then they flip the heads if they flip heads they're also poisoned um, this ability will negate the poison part right as long as it's active you prevent all effects so you're not poisoned but you still take damage okay but it says here, this ability does not remove existing effects. Meaning, let's say for example, your opponent does Poison Sting, but before they do Poison Sting, they play Hex Maniac, which negates Protection of the Wind. Alright? Then they flip heads for Poison Sting, and they hit you for 10, and now you're poisoned. Coming out of your next turn, Hex Maniac is no longer in effect, Protection of the Wind is back in effect, but because it comes back, it's an existing poison on you, you your, your ability won't remove that. So you still need to, to get him on the bench or, or you know, full heal or something um, to remove that poison damage. Another thing is interesting, it says, prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks done to each of your Pokemon. You think about it, you, technically your, act, your opponent's active Pokemon can't poison or paralyze your Pokemon on the bench. That doesn't make any sense. Um, and they can still do damage. 
But what I mean by this is there's a lot of Pokemon, let's say for example, I don't know, Blastoise EX that hits you and then uh, Rapid Spin, whatever it does. Or there's other attacks that um, makes you switch your Pokemon and their Pokemon gets switched or something like that, right? Whenever they do an attack <clears throat> that causes you to switch your Pokemon, uh, your, your, your active and your bench Pokemon, I believe this ability would negate that done to each of your Pokemon, meaning those Pokemon will not get switched. And speaking of um, Curly Ribbon with uh, Sylveon, that won't work. So energy discarding, they can't discard energies from Suicune. Let's say for example you have a special water energy, which is also in this set, uh, and then you're playing an expanded for some reason, or you're playing, um, yeah, an expanded. The only card, the first card that I think about is Cobalion EX in expanded. They hit you for Righteous Edge, they won't be able to discard your your special water energy off your Suicune, because that's an effect. So a lot of things right there in protection of the win. I think it's pretty cool. You still take damage though, but hey, I mean, it's interesting. So let's take a look at Seismitoad. I think Seismitoad will be a little uh, pretty fun to look at. <clears throat> so Suck Up, this is going to be a two turn kind of thing. Suck Up, attach three energy cards from your discard pile. Now. I believe it's three energy cards from this card pile and attached to this Pokemon, meaning... <coughs> Excuse me for my cold, but... <clears throat> um, the three energy cards, it, it doesn't... I know you guys got, it caught me in this before. You can see right here, there's no icon on the actual image, uh, like a water energy icon. And so you're basically attaching any three energy cards from your discard pile to this Pokemon. I think this is going to be pretty cool. Um, I mean... This could work out in different decks that aren't just built for water specific decks. I think this could work out for, um, you know, maybe Archie's, uh, maybe this could be an, uh, an energy accelerator. I don't know, maybe. Like, let's say you're using Archie's um, Ace in the Hole and you get Seismosaur onto your bench and then you can use Suck Up and grab some more energy. Uh, maybe, I don't know. It seems like it takes too, too many turns to do that though. Um, and then you can get different kinds of energy and then maybe you can move them around somehow. I'm not sure. Wobbly Fall though hits for 90. If your opponent's active Pokemon, uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is not confused. Defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. So, pretty interesting there. They can't retreat, but they can still use Switch. Your opponent can still switch them out and stuff like that. Uh, escape Rope can still work. Uh, stand in and retreat can still work. Um, but for the most part, though, if they're stuck and they're confused and they have no outs, you know, they don't have uh, Zoroark to stand in and retreat. They don't have switches or escape ropes or Fold Stones. Or actually, even Fold Stone, you can't retreat. Um, they have to attack you, and then they have to take the risk of flipping heads or tails. And that's kind of pretty interesting. It's huge though, very costly, four energies. That's why I suck up here with uh, using Battle Compressor. Could work out pretty well, discard three uh, uh, basic water energies in the discard pile, and then just use uh, suck up to bring that energy back in onto your side. So it could definitely happen. It is a stage two, so stage two Pokemons are a little bit trickier. Uh, so we're going to skip over to Greninja here, and stick like Greninja's really quick. <clears throat> So I do like Greninja. I do like the uh, the one from the XY base set with uh, Water Shuriken. I like that a lot as well. But Shadow Sewing here is sewing um, during your opponent's next turn. Each Pokemon he or she in play um, uh, in the Scarpa has no abilities, excluding Pokemon brought, including Pokemon brought into play next turn. <clears throat> That's cool. All right. So this is a way you can shut off abilities for one energy, colorless energy for that matter. It hits for 40, and you shut off abilities. I think that's pretty powerful. Um, me personally, I feel like this is a toss-up between this Greninja and the Greninja from the XY base set, and I'll tell you guys why. Well, there's, there's Moon Slash too, I think this is another reason why you want to play this one over the one from the XY base set. You may return a Water Energy attached to this Pokemon uh, to your hand. If you do, this does uh, 20 more damage, and um, there's a lot of synergy between that Greninja and the Greninja break. <clears throat> and so. Uh, of course, you retain the abilities, weakness, or resistance as the uh, previous evolution. But Giant Water Shrook in here. Once you return before you attack, you may discard a Water Energy card from your hand. If you do, put six damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Six damage counters, people. That's going to knock out a lot of tiny basics. There's a lot of basics that are 50, 60, some even 30 HP, 40 HP. You're basically knocking out basics on the bench with this guy. <clears throat> that is amazing. And um, sadly, of course, you can't play this card uh, using Archie's Ace in a Hole. I believe that's the ruling you need to have. Um, yeah, because <laughs> that'd be ridiculous. That means you have like 
no retreat cost and, and no resistance and weakness if you if you get this guy from the discard pile using Archie's Ace and all. But maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. That really appreciates the ruling. But giant water screen. So why I like the one from X Y base set is because um, you can combine that with water screen and wa giant water screen and hit for 90 damage for free. 90 damage for well not free for two energies of course. But then like you're you're, you're basically like putting up a ton of damage. And then you can still use your um, your uh, your attack uh, that hits for 50, but um, but I do like uh, this Greninja as well. It has synergy uh, using uh, the Moonlight Slash to pick up that energy again, and also Shadow Sowing can be a really good attack as well. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I do want to look at the uh, Zebriska, uh, Zebriska, Zebriska, Ah, God, Zebstrika, Zebstrika, Zebstrika. Anyways, um, pretty neat artwork here. He's kind of just literally jumping out of the card right now. It's got the ability Zebra Zone, as long as this Pokemon is in play. Damage uh, done from your Lightning Pokemon attacks isn't affected by any effects uh, on your opponent's attack Pokemon. So, um, yeah, let me read that again. <laughs> as long as this Pokemon is played, damage from your Lightning Pokemon's attacks isn't affected by any effects of your opponent's attack Pokemon. That is ridiculous. That means um, you can have things, uh, special energies on your on your uh, lightning Pokemon, and as long as uh, uh, this this Pokemon is in, is in play on your bench somewhere, you have like Mega Electric EX with uh, Flash Energy, and then your opponent has an Aegislash. Slash. Basically, because of Zebra Zone, that would allow you to attack that the Aegislash. Slash. That's that's awesome. That is so cool. Um, yeah, I, I mean. Dang, that's crazy. Because uh, now, now you, this ability, I think, is pretty strong. This is a pretty strong ability. Uh, I think it's pretty good to have a 1-1 one, one line. I, I, I think so, in a lot of lightning decks. Could be pretty helpful. If you're running a lot of um, uh, flash energies and stuff like that, may maybe. I, I think I think Zebra Zone would be pretty cool to have that. Um, Shoot Down Bolt is actually really neat, too. If your opponent's active Pokemon has a fighting resistance, this attack does 60 more damage. Now, I think this could very well replace Raichu as the flying type slayer. I don't know. I'm just thinking. The only problem here is that it doesn't have free retreat. If it had a free retreat, oh my goodness, this would be just OP. Because, okay, shoot down Bolt for just a DCE. Um, uh, the nice thing about uh, Raichu is that it, 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 can, it can hit more consistently against other types. But if the active Pokemon has a uh, fighting resistance, which... Guess who has Fighting Resistance? Lugia EX, Mega Rayquaza EX, um, and the the infamous Evetal EX, of course. You're basically knocking them out for one-shots because they have Fighting Resistance. They more likely than not have Lightning Weakness. And you're hitting for 50 plus 60 more damage times 2. That's going to be 220 damage. That's knocking out a Mega Rayquaza EX for Shoot Down Bolt. And, you know, because of the Zebra Zone, I think this card is going to be seeing a lot of play. I mean, that's my assumption. I think we can... I, I, I think so. Um, I think we can see it in a lot of different Lightning builds. That's my per my take on it. Uh, it's a good card. And it's only for a DCE. So, and maybe it could be used for a one-off for other things as well. But, and, and one more thing. Um, as long as each Pokemon in play, Lightning Pokemon... This can work out with these evolutions. Think about it. You have Jolteon, right? Jolteon. Oh my goodness. Jolteon makes all your stage 1 Pokemon lightning types. This could... The, the Zebra Zone right now is, is, is basically so flexible. And oh my gosh. It, it, you know, if you're playing an expanded... Think about Donphan. Donphan with strong energy can hit... Now can hit a... Um, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? The Age Slash, right? And, or, or, or if you're playing expanded and you're up against a safeguard Pokemon, your your Mega Manectric EX can knock that thing out now. I mean, come on, this is great. This is just great. So, uh, enough about the uh, that, that Zebra Pokemon there. Let's take a look at Hypno. Hypno is actually pretty neat too. Uh, a lot of cool cards here. Hypno, the 90 HP Psychic type Pokemon. Good night, baby. Uh, once during your turn before you attack, you may use this ability. Both active Pokemon are now asleep. Now, again, this could actually be very good. If you're using, let's say, Sparkling Robe, and I think Sparkling Robe may have a lot more play now these days, because you can do this. I mean, why, why the heck not? Um, you know, put put your active Pokemon, your 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 opponent's active Pokemon to sleep, and then your guy stays awake because of Sparkling Robe. I don't know, maybe maybe that'd be pretty good. Could work very well with, um, let's say, Slurpuff, not the tasting one, but uh, the one with the uh, 
the ability um, that can protect you from special conditions. I don't remember what it's called, but that's from the XY base set. Uh, Sweet Veil, Sweet Veil, that's the name. And uh, yeah, so I don't know, could 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 work out there. That's actually kind of neat. <clears throat> All right, so. Uh, what else we got here? This guy's not too interesting. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, your opponent's active poem is not poisoned. Uh, again, this won't work for Suicune, okay? No, the poison, of course, unless you use Hex Maniac. Uh, nothing too interesting there. We have the Sigil of Fear. Um, it's actually kind of neat. Uh, Reflection Shield. During your opponent's next turn, if this Pokemon is damaged by an opponent's attack, um, even if it's knocked out, put five damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. If you're playing in the expanded format, I could see this work out really well with, let's say, Rock Guard. <laughs> Reflection Shield plus Rock Guard. They attack you and knock out the Sigilyph. They take 110 damage. That's kind of funny. Um, certainly could be uh, some jokes there. Um, but anyways, where the heck are we? Uh, we just got done with looking at the Sigilyph, so here it is! Lo and behold, Garbodor is back with Garbotoxin. This Pokemon has, if this Pokemon has a Pokemon tool card attached to it, each Pokemon in play in each player's hand in each player's discard pile has no abilities. Uh, except for Garbotoxin. <laughs> and so, Garbotoxin is back. But here's the catch. Um, offensive Bomb. That is offensive. Hits for 60. Which is kind of the same thing as the previous Garbodor from Dragon's Exalted, reprinted later on as a secret rare in, um, um, you know what? I can't remember what set. <laughs> so, uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused and poisoned. Okay, this is very key here. The attack is different. So, based on this ruling, um, you can't use your Garbodor from Dragon's Exalted. Uh, even though it has the same ability, Garbotoxin, I believe the ruling is, since it's a different attack, it's really a different card. Even though the HP is the same, the retreat cost is the same, the weakness is the same. Yeah. Um, the attack is different. I think the ruling is you have to use this copy if you want to play in standard. Um, but yeah, I think that, that's. I, I believe that's the ruling. So, Garbodor is back, guys. Be watchful. Garbodor. Such a strong ability. All the way back from Jack's Exalted is back in the standard format here. Age of Slash here is also a psychic Pokemon, not its usual uh, metal type. Sword Payment is actually going to be pretty cool. Put damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon equal to the number of damage counters already on them. So if they have 50 damage on them already, Sword Payment is going to hit them for another another 50, and that's already 100 damage on them. So Mega Ton Slash, we've seen these things before. This attack does 10 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Um, not very impressed. I think Sword Pain is going to be really cool because of Dimension Valley. You can just simply do this for a DCE and you can get the job done. Um, so we got Age of Slash there. We do have Trevenant, and Trevenant Break is actually uh, really cool. But I do think I'd rather use the Trevenant that has um, the ability Forest Curse uh, that blocks out item cards. I think that one's a little bit more powerful. Although this one's kind of neat as well, right? Anxiety, Seed. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's, um, your opponent's basic Pokemon's attack is one more. So, uh, the thing is, the problem is it's the basics, right? And, um, yeah, I think it's kind of cool, you know, especially for big basics, uh, big basic EXs, Lucario EX, and and whatnot, and if you're playing Expanded, there's Landorus EX, there's Mewtwo EX, um, Evil Tall EX, alright, right, um, <clears throat> so I don't know, I I'd rather go with the other Trevenant, the one that has Force Curse, um, but Energy Press is actually pretty good too, this stack does 10 damage to each, for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, so it, it does have a little more potential there, but I think, um, I'd rather have the one with for, uh, Forest Curse. I think the ability is better, and I think uh, the attack... Actually, I think the attack there is better as well. So Trevenant Break will evolve from one of those Trevenants. And um, Silent Fear, you put three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. This could be really good for cleanup, especially teaming up with the Trevenant uh, with Forest Curse, um, since that one does do spread damage hit for 60 and 30 for uh, two Pokemon on the bench. Silent Fear can hit for... Um, I mean, think about it. If your opponent has a full bench, let's say you're playing against a, a deck that uses Sky Field, you put 30 damage across the board. That's 240 damage. Um, no, more than that, right? Uh, nine Pokemon, so that's 270 damage. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, it is a nice HP boost at 160. I do like that a lot. And I do like this artwork. It's just, I like how on, on the corners of this card, it's just like it's just, it just smashed through another tree or something. I don't know. <laughs> And speaking of Trevenant, uh, we have um, <clears throat> um, the tree Pokemon here. 
uh, Sudowuru here, I can't pronounce him correctly, but <laughs> I do like all this Trevenant in the background, and he's just kind of chilling here. Oh man, let's get a zoom in here. Oh, whoops. <laughs> there he is. Um, just hanging out with a bunch of other Trevenants and getting away with it. Learn by imitation. If your, uh, if your opponents uh, use a uh, Pokemon attack during his or last turn, use that attack as this attack. Now the question here is this, right? If your opponent, if your opponent used a Pokemon's attack during his or her next turn, use that as this attack. So the condition is as follows: that this guy doesn't need to be in the active previously. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, think about it. If you have Whale Lord EX sitting in the active spot, taking a huge hit for you, and the Whale Lord has a Fold Stone, or or maybe better yet, you have um. I don't know, if you're playing Expand, you can use Caldeo to rush in and retreat, or Zoroark to stand in and retreat. But the idea is this, right? Or even Switch or Escape Rope. Learn by imitation. With this energy right here, you you, you can you basically just allow that Waylord to take a hit for you, and then you can switch, and then you can use Learn by imitation, and basically do that same amount of damage back. Or maybe you can use Robo Substitute, I don't know. This could be pretty useful, I have no idea. Maybe... Um, uh, this guy is only 90 HP, so it's pretty weak, and so when you do learn by imitation and you hit the, your opponent's active, you're basically going to get knocked out most of the time. I don't know. So there's that too, but it's an idea. Alright, so Garchomp here is not a Dragon type anymore, it's a Fighting type. Once again, it does have really cheap attacks, uh, very cost efficient attacks. Uh, Assault Turbo hits for 60, attach an energy card uh, from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon, so a little bit of energy accelerating there. It is a stage 2, so it does take quite a bit to evolve through all the stages and get them out. Um, <clears throat> if your opponent's active Pokemon, it is a Pokemon EX, this does 80 more damage, which is pretty cool. Since this is also a fighting type now, you can use Strong Energy, Muscle Band, Fighting Stadium. <coughs> Two Strong Energies, Muscle Band. Fighting Stadium, you're hitting for 240 damage. Wow. Wow, that's cool. Um, but yeah, that is two strong energies, but you can knock out just about any Mega at that point. Um, so we're going to skip over Pancham and Nuzlocke here. We got Shiftry. Uh, Shiftry isn't too good. Um, Shiftry right now. Uh, flip three coins, this card, and number of cards from your opponent's hand equal to number of cards of heads. Yeah, sure, why not? Put a trainer card from discard pile into your hand. So this one's actually kind of good. Um, so, uh, Tengu Return hits for 60, but, I mean, you can put a trainer card. I can see this in Expanded really well. Uh, with Expanded, you can put, like, your computer search back into your hand. That's so cheap. And you can have infinite computer search almost, uh, as long as your guy doesn't get knocked out. Um, so, let's skip over Dark Rite EX. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. And, uh, here, Pangoro. So, I want to take a look at Pangoro. I think Pangoro is really cool. Um, Parting Shot. Hit for 10, and then you switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. During your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon's attacks do 60 less. So this is kind of a slow uh, way to progress, but maybe, I don't know, uh, I can, I can kind of see this doing sp like spinning turn, maybe? Like kind of like what uh, Don Fan does. Uh, hits for 10, and then, you know, goes to the bench. I mean, if you have a Muscle Band, you can hit for 30, uh, and then you reduce your your um, opponent's attack by 60. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, I guess you can kind of make out a deck out of this, but because of Lysander, VS Seeker, Lysander, VS Seeker, Lysander, like, Pangoro's gonna probably get knocked out pretty easily, um, so I don't feel very safe with that. Parting Shot just doesn't hit enough for me, um, but yeah. All right, so we're gonna skip over the uh, Caesars here. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, we're gonna look at the uh, Feral Thorn. Uh, this guy is pretty cool. 100 HP Metal type Pokemon. Uh, metal Attack or Metal Claw hits for 40. So the Spike Whip is what's interesting. This attack does 10 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon times the number of retreat costs in each of your opponent's retreat cost. Um, of course, if you have Mr. My Mouth here, um, yeah, that, that won't work. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, maybe. If your opponent plays uh, a deck that has a lot of high retreat cost, it could actually work to your benefit. You'd be hitting for 30 and stuff like that. Uh, the energy cost is kind of high, though. I mean, seriously, three energies to do this? I don't see it as worth it. Um, but that's just my opinion. Maybe maybe something could work out with it. Um, Clefable. I don't think Clefable is that interesting. Uh, from what I remember, Clefable was just kind of ho hum. Um, yeah, dragons right here. Can't do anything. Sure, why not? Um, 
yeah. But Dragology, on the other hand, is kind of neat. I do prefer the one with um, uh, Prison Barrier, Poison Barrier. Uh, severe Poison. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now Poison. Put four damage counters on it instead of one on between turns. So, <laughs> you guys remember Verbeek City Gem? Well, this is one more on top of that. Wow. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this would be really good, but um, certainly something to think about. And so now, it's time for Raticate. A lot of you guys have been really excited for Raticate. Antibodies, this Pokemon can't be affected by special conditions. Remove any special conditions on this Pokemon. And this is significant. So unlike Suicune, okay, meaning that let's say your opponent uses Hexamaniac, shuts off your abilities, and they poison you, all right, at the end of your next turn, that poison actually gets removed because Hexamaniac is no longer in effect. This actually antibodies that will come back into play and it will remove it. So that's good to note. So that's the difference between uh, Raticate and Suicune. Um, Dirty Shock, uh, discard all two cards attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think the ability is what makes it great. So, Raticate Break is what makes this card, uh, this thing cool. <laughs> this 3D golden Raticate here. Oh man, sure. <clears throat> Alright, put damage counters on the defending Pokemon until its remaining HP is 10. Whoa, what does this sound like to me? This sounds like a good combination between Raticate Break and that Spinarak Pokemon. <laughs> Not Spinarak, um, gosh, I can't remember its name. But you guys know what I'm talking about. It evolves from Spinarak, it does that um, Poisonous Nest. I can't think of the name right now, um, but is it? Aerados, Aerados, that's the name. Thank you, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> no one reminded me. But yeah, you can combine that, and then that's an automatic KO right there. That is awesome, I think. And again, Raticate's HP is 110, so it's a little bit beefier than the, you know, the usual Raticate. Uh, the, the other Raticate from, I think, what was it? Uh, Boundaries Cross did uh, Super Fang as well. Uh, but this Raticate only hits for, um, for DCE, so that's actually really effective. And can you imagine, um, if you're playing Expanded, and you have Mew EX, does it have... 10 more HP than this Raticate Break, but Mew EX with Dimension Valley, all it needs is one energy to use Super Fang. And then if you're playing it Expanded, there's Sentinel Toxic Laser. Oh my gosh. Alright, so next we have Stantler. Um, not particularly interested in this guy. Um, he does, yeah, for a DCE, you can do big charge hits for 30, plus 50 more damage if you have a Mega on your bench, but... Blah. Um, we're going to skip over Ho-Oh again, we're going to look at all the EXs at the end. We're just going to go right into the item cards. We have Time Puzzle here, and you may play two Time Puzzles at the same time. So you, what you do is you drop both of them down at the same time. You don't play one and then do this first effect, and then play another one and be like, okay, now I can do this effect. That doesn't work like that. I think you have to play them, you have to drop them from your hand down onto the playing table at the same time. That would be too cheap if you do this, and go, like, hey, I get to look at the top three cards. And then I play, you play an element. Hey, I get to put two cards in my hand. I think it's one or the other. I think that should be the ruling. Um, but you can, however, play one and be like, hey, I need to look at the top three cards. And you look at the top three cards, you rearrange them. And then you play another one and be like, oh, wait, I changed my mind. I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah, but why would you do that, though? Why would not you just grab two, discard, uh, two, items, two cards from your discard pile? And I like this a lot. You put two cards, any two cards from your discard pile into your hand. I think this will be really cheap and expanded if you can do this. You can get your A-spec cards back into play like that. That's kind of cheap, but again, you have to get two of these time puzzles. Um, I don't see how this could be very competitive. It certainly could be very competitive if you can get two of them, and maybe you, you can save them. You, you draw one, you can save another one. I don't know. Um, and it's two cards. It doesn't say excluding time puzzle. Um, but why would you grab two more time puzzles just to, just to, yeah, that doesn't make any sense, um, but <clears throat> that's just me. Okay, so next is the Max Elixir here. Max Elixir, uh, you look at the top six cards from, of your deck, you may reveal a basic energy card you find there and attach it to one of your bench basic Pokemon. So a lot of con uh, constricting th uh, rules here, shuffle your cards uh, back into your deck. So. Um, it's only basic. Ooh, something happened here. Something crashed. <laughs> That's not good. It's only basic, okay? And you can only play it onto your bench Pokemon, and it's only for basic bench Pokemon. So, yeah, uh, you gotta remember those things. Again, if you're playing a lot of Stage 1s, this won't work for them. Uh, if you're playing a lot of Special Energies, that won't work either. So a couple things right there. Alright. Uh, ooh. 
All right, dude. All right, then. Um, let's take a look at uh, Burst Balloon here. Burst Balloon uh, will be able to do... It's a tool card. Uh, this card attached to the Pokemon... Uh, wait. Oh, yeah. If this card is attached to a Pokemon at the end of your opponent's next turn, discard this card. So, it really only lasts for one turn. If the Pokemon this card is attached to by uh, your active Pokemon and is damaged by your opponent's attack, even if, Pokemon, if the Pokemon is knocked out, put six damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So, I believe the ruling with this card is um, even if your opponent is, uh, even if your if your Pokemon is on the bench, and you play this boot burst balloon, based off this ruling, if this card is attached to a Pokemon at the end of your opponent's next turn, this card this card. So it doesn't say active Pokemon. It just says Pokemon. So I think the ruling means that you really shouldn't play this on a Pokemon on the bench. Uh, that'd be kind of useless because you're gonna end up discarding it. And never really using it. So, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like it's kind of a waste. And maybe you can buy yourself a turn. I think you can probably buy yourself a turn and you end up discarding uh, Burst Balloon. Um, play it onto your active Pokemon and your your um, your opponent's like, uh, well, I don't want to attack it. It's going to take me, we're going to get six damage on it. You know, maybe, just maybe. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so, Fighting Fury Belt. I do like this card though. All right. Uh, the Pokemon this card is attached to gets 40 HP, 40 additional HP, and this attack does 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Now, I mentioned before with uh, how this could work out with um, uh, Meganium here, I can't pronounce his name, but it gives it extra 40 HP, so you're at 190, plus, like, Training Center, I, I, ideally you won't play that, you'll probably be playing um, Forest of Giant Plants, but hypothetically, if you're playing Training Center, uh, you'll be at 220 HP. Wow, that's pretty cool. And um, and you also get an additional 10 damage. That's pretty neat. And I think 10 damage makes a difference. There's a lot of Pokemon that hits for 170, and they're just that 10 damage short. And so this, I think that we're gonna see uh, Fighting Fury Belt quite a bit. Uh, it could certainly be a very useful card. Uh, one thing I would be hesitant to play it is if you relied on it too much. Let's say you play it on a Pokemon that has 160 HP, you drop this guy, this card on it, now it has 200 HP. Your opponent hits you for 190 and you're down to 10 HP. You hit your opponent back and your opponent's next turn, they just use Starling Megaphone and that's a knockout on your Pokemon. Does that make sense? So there's that scenario too. That's another reason why I'm a little bit hesitant, but you never know. You could probably help you out quite a bit. So we got the spirit links here. I'm just going to skip through those. Um, for the supporters here, we have Delinquent here. And I think Delinquent's going to be really overpowered. A lot of people are already saying this card needs to get banned. I've heard things like that, but I mean, maybe. Uh, maybe it's really good. Maybe it's... Uh, I think it's really good, but maybe it's not overviews yet. I don't know just yet. But um, discard any stadium card in play. Okay. Then your opponent uh, discards three cards from his or her hand. So it is conditional in the, in the idea that you need to have a stadium card in play, whether it's yours or your opponent's. And then your opponent discards three cards from their hand. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. If they just got, uh, they play Shaman, they have six cards. Well, in your coming turn, you just play this card and then they lose three. What? That's ridiculous. And, and the flip coin side is that um, I think Delinquent here... It could help out your opponent actually in some scenarios. Let's say for scenarios where you need cards to be in the discard pile and you help them out. I don't know, maybe. That's kind of minimal. Um, but again, a lot of people are already saying this card is going to be way too strong. And I kind of agree. Alright, so we have here uh, Psychic Mind Reading. Psychic's Mind Reading. This guy's like kind of, I don't know, trying to earth bend, water bend here. I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah. Um, so your opponent reveals his or her hand's card as many cards from your hand as you like, then draw that many cards. So this is kind of like, uh, kind of like a Sycamore, not really, uh, because you can control exactly how many cards you want to discard, and you get to see your opponent's hand. So I do like this to an extent. Um, I think this could work out very well with Shaman. So for example, uh, you play your hand size down, your card size, uh, your hand size down to just one card left, which is Psychic Mind uh, Reading, and you draw five additional cards, and then you play this card, you look at your opponent's hand, and then you can discard, you know, th those five cards that you just drew off the Shaman, and then draw another five cards or something like that. I don't know. You know, certainly it could be something really good. Um, yeah. 
and, and maybe maybe you have like an eight card hand and then you play psychic mind reading you're down to seven you discard four more cards you still keep the three you need and then you draw four additional cards so there's a lot of scenarios like that i do like it i wonder if there's going to be uh, full arts for it but i'm not sure uh we have reverse valley is the only stadium in here uh, the blue side, choose which way this card faces before you play it. Any damage done to Pokemon this card is facing, this side is facing, by um, uh, this player's uh, metal Pokemon is reduced by 10. So, talk about defense. So, uh, metal Pokemon gets a little defensive boost by 10. And then you also have shield energy, which if you can stack on 4, which is ridiculous if you can ever stack on 4 shield energies, you'll be reducing a damage by a total of 50 which is pretty cool. Uh, the red side, of course, chooses way, yeah. Uh, players on this side, their uh, darkness Pokemon do 10 more damage to the defending Pokemon. So if you're playing a metal and a dark Pokemon battle, they kind of negate each other. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're playing a, a, a metal or, or a darkness deck, I think this is going to be a pretty good uh, stadium to consider. And last, before we hit the uh, EXs, we have Splash Energy. Um, about time we have, uh, you know, you know. We, previously we had Burning Energy, which was for Fire Pokemon. Now we have Splash Energy, which is for Water Pokemon. So we basically have a special energy for almost every type: uh, Wonder Energy, Mystery Energy, Splash Energy. Uh, which one are we missing? I don't think we're missing anything. We have Herbal Energy. I think we got everything. Oh yeah, I think Splash Energy is the only one. So. This card can only be attached to water Pokemon, of course. If the water Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an attack, that Pokemon, put that Pokemon back into your hand, discard all uh, attached, cards attached to that Pokemon. Now, I don't know for sure if that's, um, let's say you're playing with like, um, I don't know, a break Pokemon, or me, me, I don't know. Do, do you bring back all the Pokemon or just, just the break? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me know in the rules. Uh, let me know what the ruling is below in the comments below. That would be really helpful for me. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and again, did we get every single uh, special energy for all types now? We even have double dragon energy. Um, and of course, we have DCE. That's that's for call this Pokemon. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's about it. Okay. I think that I think every every type has energy now. I think. Okay. So uh, besides, there's this Gyarados here. Uh, which is the shiny, the shiny Gyarados. We see the, the regular one here, um, but then this is the secret rare. The secret rare actually looks really cool. I do like the secret rare, uh, but it's a shiny Gyarados regardless, and this is like an extra shiny Gyarados. I don't know if that's even real. Um, flip a coin until you get tails. Um, for each head, search your deck for a water energy and attach it to this Pokemon. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Now, it's very unlikely you flip four heads in a row, but you don't need four heads, you need three heads in a row. Uh, still, that's actually very unlikely. Um, but t getting two is pretty good, uh, especially if you're playing um, Trick Coin, but not that you would. Uh, in Expanded, if you have Victini, Fliptini, surely you can get two in a row at some point, and then you get three energies on this guy coming into your next turn, you play one more energy down, you can use Splash Bang. This does 10 damage to each of your own bench Pokemon, unless you have Mr. Mime, you can protect that bench. But, uh, besides the artwork, which looks just fabulous, this looks phenomenal. I was always a big Gyarados fan, ever since the black, uh, the, back in the, uh, base set, uh, original base set. And I do like this secret rare, oh my goodness. The gold border is beautiful, uh, with just the, the water, how oh, he's like half in the water, it looks like he's about to eat this guy. And, um, anyways... Let's take a look at the Mega, Mega Gyarados EX. Are you kidding me? That is amazing. Uh, of course, this is not the, the full art one. Here, this is the full art one right here. Uh, what is this? Blast Geyser. Uh, it is four energy here. It hits for 120, but you may do 20 more damage for each water energy attached to the Pokemon. If you do, discard the top two cards from your deck. So, assuming you have all four water energies, you're hitting for 200 damage. Um, it is for a pretty costly amount, uh, and you do discard two cards from your deck. But again, I think this is this is pretty equivalent to this is a little. I, I actually say this is not equivalent. Uh, I take that back. This is a little bit under Mega Mewtwo uh, X EX because um, both both of them do uh, have high energy costs, um, which is four. And uh, Mega Gyarados EX here is cost is four, but the nice the advantage with Mega Mewtwo EX is 
you don't discard your own deck, um, and you have Dimension Valley, which can shorten um, you know your energy cost a little bit. And then you're also hitting for 200. So this guy can hit for 200 as well. Uh, but yeah, you end up discarding two cards from your deck, and you, you, it's required to have all four water energies uh, to hit for 200. So I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I think Mega Mewtwo X EX is stronger. But you do have another 10 damage here for 240. It'd be cool if this was 250. That would be really neat, but it didn't happen. Uh, we have the Manaphy EX here, and um, this is not the full art version. The full art version is right here. This kind of looks like an alien, actually. Um, each of your Pokemon that has any water energy attached to it has no retreat cost. What? What is this? This is basically Darkrai's Dark Cloak reinvented in Aqua Tube. And I think this is giving um, water Pokemon a huge boost to get free retreat. Any free retreat is going to be a big deal with water decks, especially if you have Whale Lord EX being out there, sitting there as a tank. Um, you can just retreat it for free with the water energy. And so you heal 30 damage from each of your bench Pokemon, hit for 60. I don't think this is ever going to happen. Again, this guy is only 120 HP, so it's very weak, very fragile. And I think that's one of the bummers here. Um, compared to uh, Darkrai with Dark Cloak, you were actually able to potentially attack with it, and it was also 180 HP. Alright, speaking of Darkrai, it's coming up next. Let's take a look at the uh, Espeon EX here. <clears throat> Miracle Shrine, uh, de-evolve each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon and put the highest stage Pokemon um, back into your opponent's hand. Now, this could work out if you play starting Megaphone and you're up against uh, Megas. Maybe you can set them back like that. But this won't really help you if you're playing against Crawdon or uh, Crobat and Zubat or, and Golbat, uh, all those bats. And that's going to be very inconvenient with Miracle Shine, um, so you might not want to do that. But again, since this is colorless, if you have Dimension Valley, you can hit that for free. Uh, Psy Shot here for 2 energy and a Dimension Valley, or a DCE and a uh, Psychic Energy. Hit for 70. This attack damage isn't affected by any effects of your opponent's active Pokemon, meaning if you're playing in um, Expanded and you're up against Safeguard Pokemon, since SP on the EX is an EX, this can hit through them. Um, yeah, or let's say you have Mystery Energy and a DCE, you can hit you can hit 70 damage against an Age Slash EX. I don't know. All right, the full art here does look pretty cool. I do like. Um, it just looks it has an aura with it. it looks like it's evil almost. And um, I, man, I, I like the contrast here. The purple uh, kind of tints into pink. It makes it for a, a, a hot feel, even though at the tip of it, it gives a more cooler feel. Um, if you're interested in colors, but color schemes. But anyways, um, so Darkrai, oh, my favorite Pokemon. I am stoked for Darkrai, but uh, let's take a look at this. The 180 HP uh, Dark Pokemon. Dark Pulse hits for 20 damage, plus this attack does 20 more damage for each. Uh, darkest energy attached to all of your Pokemon. I think Dark Pulse is going to be a really good combination with Evil Tall. Can you imagine Evil Tall and maybe even Mal or definitely Malamar? Why? Because Dark Head coming up next. But for example, if you can pile up a lot of energy on Malamar EX or even Darkrai EX, or not Darkrai, right, but um, uh, Evil Tall EX, Dark Pulse can hit for a lot of damage for DCE or for two energies, of course. Attached to also, let's say if you have two, two Darkness energies on this Darkrai, um, hitting for 20 and then 20 more for each. Just for this attack alone, you're hitting for 60. Plus, most of you're hitting for 80. But let's say you have five more on the bench. Right, which is definitely possible. That's seven total energy cards in play, which is definitely possible if you're playing, you know, I don't know, eight total energies. I'm just kidding. Um, certainly possible. You can hit for 180. You can hit for 180 um, just with Dark Pulse. And that's actually kind of neat. Um, dark Head, though. Right, if this poke, if your your opponent's active Pokemon is asleep, this attack does 80 more damage. Malamar EX will work out really well with this. You know, the Maximar, Malamar EX, whatever it is. Uh, you, if you have enough energies on this Dark Ride, which is kind of costly, uh, DCE and a Dark Energy, um, yeah, at some point, if you can do that, you have a Muscle Band on this Dark Ride, plus an Energy Drop on a Malamar EX on the bench, uh, Hyper Hypnosis, you put your, your, your opponent's active Pokemon to sleep, you'd be hitting for a knockout, basically, hitting for 180. So, I think that's kind of neat, and if you look at this full art, oh, this is gorgeous right here. Uh, man, Dark Rye, uh, definitely black and red is its color scheme. I, I do like the, um, the non-full art a 
a lot of hints of blue and white here. It makes it feel more magical instead of sinister feel. You can see right here it feels very dark and sinister uh, versus this is it has that bright spot here. Kind of attracts your eyes to that. But anyways, besides that, let's take a look at um, the only other Mega in this set so far. Uh, I do like this full art art, man. This is amazing. Um, Steel Wing uh, hits for 20 and then just reduced by 20. Uh, yeah, it's alright, I guess. Um, but Gale Thrust here hits for 50. If this Pokemon is on the bench and became your active this turn, it does 60 more damage. Um, certainly a potential there. Um, hit for 50 plus 60. Uh, yeah, I can hit for 110. Uh, plus Muscle Band if you really want to, but more, most likely you're using the Sprint Link. Uh, yeah, hitting for 110. Uh, there could be other ways you can do go around trying to build a deck around this guy, but ideally you want to build a deck around the Mega. Um, and so, Iron Crusher for only two energies, two metal energies, hits for 120. You may either discard a special energy card attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, or discard a Stadium card in play. Why is this significant? Well, it's kind of significant because, for example, if you're up against uh, Mega Mewtwo EX, it needs a Stadium card in play. If you can hit Iron Crusher before your, that Mega Mewtwo is able to hit you, that means your opponent will need to get another Stadium in play. And, uh, you know, discarding Stadium in play is why the heck not? Why don't you just discard it? You know, it, it could come in handy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Iron Crusher only hits for 120, a little bit low, but. For its efficiency, it's pretty darn good. Um, but yeah, it is two metal energies, so it's not like one metal, one colorless. Um, but regardless, I think the effect is kind of neat. Uh, being able to discard special energy or stadium card in play. Just gotta make sure you're not discarding your own stadium card in play. That'd be a little bit counterintuitive. But man, the full art here is amazing. Iron Crusher here. Um, I do like... Exactly, so you can see the perspective right here. They're, they're trying to add some kind of perspective here as all these things kind of pointing inward and making him kind of zoom out at you. Um, very cool, very cool. Alright, so we got a ho -O EX here as the last card in this set. This is a, a pretty long set review. Um, Purifying Flame. Alright, once during turn before your attack, this Pokemon has any basic fire energy attached to it, heal 50 damage from this Pokemon. Um... Why would you have basic energy, fire basic energy, if this is <laughs> elemental feather requires uh, grass, water, and lightning? This attack does 30 damage to one of your, of your opponent's bench Pokemon, and it only hits for 130. I'm not really feeling this, but I think there's definitely a potential here. Um, certainly with all these uh, simi decks and stuff like that, uh, maybe you can combine something and make it a, a multi-type deck. Um, I think this could work really well with, um, oh man, what's that one guy that does the um, uh, that Shed Cloak whatever ability where you can swap out your basic energies in the discard pile? I think, that, I think uh, oh man, I can't remember its name, but you guys know what I'm talking about. If you guys do, post it in the comments below. Anyways, you can, if you have a, a fire energy in the discard pile, you can just swap it out with your lightning energy or something like that. Heal off 50 damage, and I think you should be able to swap out again and then go on your merry way. So, that's a thought. I mean, potentially ho EX could do that. Uh, hits for only 130. Uh, I, I, I don't know how I feel about this, though. Uh, four different, um, three different energies. Well, te technically four. Uh, it could definitely work out for those hodgepodge decks that uses different uh, types, so you can kind of cover different weaknesses and various meta. Um, but yeah, so the ho oh here, um, the full art, I do like this full art. It has a very rainbow feel to it. You can see right here, the sun is right, I feel like that's the sun right behind it. And then of course, sun rays, uh, you know, the color of the rainbows right there. Very, very pretty. Um, but yeah, that's it for this set. Um, and I'm just gonna go back right here. You can see still a lot of cards missing. Um, the breakpoint is over here, and this is the Rage of Broken Heavens. It only has 80 cards, uh, plus all of these secret rare. Um, apparently, they're they're secret rares, but um, I don't I don't think so. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, according to this, they're secret rares, but I think in the English set they won't be. I would assume that they they would just be like part of the set numbers. But yeah, there's still 40 cards missing, still a lot to come, but this will be it for the Breakthrough Set Review. Uh, if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button below this video. Thanks so much for supporting this channel and being a part of this epic journey of countless and endless Pokemon TCG Online Battles. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.